In my last video, we looked at how you can use an inactive OnStar system to make a free, hands-free voice call to 911 in the event of an emergency. I also mentioned that relatedly, pretty much any old mobile phone that works can also call 911 for free in an emergency, regardless of whether it's active with a service plan. This is because in the US, the Wireless Communications and Public Safety Act of 1999, also known as the 911 Act, mandates that mobile carriers connect 911 calls regardless of the subscription status of the handset that places the call. Now when I said any phone that works, what I really should have said was any phone that can still get a signal. Unfortunately, many older mobile phones, and for that matter in-vehicle telematic systems like OnStar dating from 2014 and earlier, are 2G or 3G based. And the major mobile carriers AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon have shut down those older systems in favor of newer and faster 4G and 5G networks. The sunsetting of 2G and 3G services means that many older mobile phones and mobile phone based telematic systems like OnStar have no signal today. Still, I wanted to test once and for all whether this was well and truly the end for emergency services over 2G and 3G technology. Technology. The shutdown of these systems was largely completed by the end of 2022, so if we do find that any of them still work in 2025, it's probably not an accident. Now if you happen to have one of those outdated OnStar systems, there is a small chance it can be fixed with a free software update, so it's worth checking with a dealership near you. Otherwise, the process to swap an obsolete OnStar unit for an updated one can be costly, running anywhere from several hundred to a thousand dollars or more, and there could be issues with hardware and parts availability that make it a non-starter from the get-go. But then that's what makes the idea of using an old, disused cell phone so compelling. If you have an old, working mobile phone lying around, it could just be the lifeline that you need in an emergency. But if the phone is already a decade or more old, then there will undoubtedly be a litany of issues aside from just the fact that it relies on obsolete 2G or 3G technology. Of the three old phones I'm testing in this video from 2003, 2006, and 2010, one needed a new charger, and two needed new batteries to replace the danger pillows I found stuffed inside them. Prior to the 2010s, every company had their own bespoke charging connectors, and some even had multiple versions. So it wasn't as simple as pulling out a standard USB cable. In the end, I spent about $100 on obsolete and discontinued batteries and chargers just to get these three phones working again for long enough to make test calls. And if that's not foreshadowing a waste of money, I don't know what is. Now, placing test calls to 911 is a perfectly acceptable practice that we've been doing in the telecom field for decades. That being said, there's a right way and a wrong way, so I'll repeat what I said about this in my last video. Before beginning, I contacted my local public safety answering point, or PSAP, also known as a 911 call center, at their non-emergency number to let them know that I'd be conducting these tests. Calling ahead is mandatory, as it prevents false 911 calls and avoids wasting first responders' valuable time. If you want to test an old mobile phone this way yourself, you should be able to find the number for your local piece app with a quick Google search. The first and earliest phone we're testing today is the Samsung SGH X427. Released in 2003, or more than 22 years ago, it's notable that it was the only one of the bunch that turned on right out of the junk drawer, with the battery also successfully taking a full charge after being plugged in for just 30 minutes. Designed for AT&T's networks of the day, then known as Singular Wireless, the phone supports GSM at 850 and 1900 megahertz, as well as GPRS, both of which were considered 2G standards. Next up, we have the LG VX8300 released in 2006, or about 19 years ago. It needed a new battery as well as a replacement for its missing charger, and fortunately both parts were easy enough to find all these years later. This phone works on Verizon's CDMA 850 and 1900 MHz 3G voice network, as well as 1X EVDO for limited high-speed data. The final old phone that we're testing today is actually my first smartphone, the HTC Droid Incredible, released in 2010 running Android 2.1. Designed for Verizon's networks, the phone relies on CDMA 2000 and EVDO Revision A, both newer evolutions of the now obsolete 3G voice and data technology used by the previous phone. In all three cases, the phones thought they were calling 911. What was happening each time was that the phone was reaching out, attempting to get a response and signal lock from a nearby tower. It would broadcast its signal in bursts of increasing strength in the hopes of eventually making a connection. But since no such connections exist anymore, the phones just hang there, 
if they don't time out internally. It might seem like all hope is lost, but there remains one more option to obtain a working phone that's almost as cheap as free. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a phone. In fact, if all you want it for is emergencies, you don't need to spend $100 or even $50. As of the time of this video, Walmart has three options for mobile phones priced under $20 US. Now, all three of these phones are prepay models locked to their respective providers. One works with Boost Mobile, while the other two work with TrackPhone. Since I know that TrackPhone uses Verizon's network, whose coverage and service I'm already familiar with, that's the one I chose. And between the two versions they offered, I just went with the one that had the better specs. 16 gigabytes for the same price as 8. Nice. Not that any of that matters for a dumb flip phone though, because again, all we're after here is a working mobile phone and a working network for it to connect to. But before we perform this last test, it's important to discuss the disadvantages of relying on any mobile phone or telematics system as your sole lifeline in the event of an emergency. First, even if you can successfully call 911 from an inactive mobile phone, the operator won't be able to call you back if you get disconnected, and it may not be possible for them to receive accurate GPS information or any at all. Even worse, you could be left unconscious or incapacitated in a crash and unable to make a call of any kind on any phone regardless. It's also common for a vehicle's electrical system to become damaged or inoperable after a severe crash, rendering even an active OnStar or similar system completely useless. Today, there are a wide variety of emergency call and automatic crash detection options that use standalone devices or even the mobile phone, smartwatch, or fitness tracker you may already have. And I'll talk a little more about how those work at the end of the video. So the last phone we'll be testing today is called the TCL Flip 3, and for $19.88, it comes with a USB cable, a charger, and a SIM card with activation instructions in the event you actually do want to add airtime for texts and non-emergency calls. But to make a point, I'm taking out the SIM card for this test because I want to prove that you just don't need it to call 911. Um, yes, I'm actually just testing a uh, cellular-based emergency line. Are you able to confirm if you can receive my GPS location? I, I can't. I don't have your GPS at all. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are countless systems and devices designed to help you in the event of a crash. GM has OnStar, but Toyota has Safety Connect, Nissan has Nissan Connect, and Subaru has Starlink, just to name a few. But your best option might be the device that's probably already in your pocket. In the United States, a whopping 91% of adults own a smartphone, and nearly 100% of them are Androids and iPhones. If you own an Android phone, look for the Safety or Personal Safety app. If you've never used it before, the app will walk you through the steps to set it up and enter the necessary personal information. The emergency the SOS feature allows you to easily call 911 by pressing the power button quickly five times in a row. For some Android phones, including newer models of Google Pixel, there's even a crash detection option that you can configure to automatically place a 911 call and notify emergency contacts in the event of a crash. If you own an iPhone, open the Settings app and select Emergency SOS. Similar to the Android, from here you can manage your list of emergency contacts and turn automated safety features on or off. When properly enabled, you can call 911 either by pressing the power button quickly five times in a row, or by pressing and holding both the power button and volume up or down at the same time. If you have an iPhone 14 or later, you'll also find an option for automatic crash detection, just like the Google Pixel. The Apple Watch is also capable of similar features in its own right, with Apple Watch Series 8 or later also supporting its own automatic crash detection. Don't forget that Androids and iPhones with these features don't need to be tied to an active service plan in order to work, because they'll still be able to make the 911 call regardless. The smartphone itself doesn't need a service plan just to be a crash-detecting handheld computer, and so the emergency SOS features work just the same. Even if you don't own a smartphone or a smartwatch, there are a variety of standalone safety devices and services available today, and we've come a long, long way from I've fallen and I can't get up. If you're interested in enabling any of these features on your Android or iPhone, or if for some reason you really just want to get a TCL Flip 3, then I've included links to Google and Apple's instructions, as well as a non-sponsored, non-affiliate link to the Flip 3 in the video description. I've included a few links to various other standalone safety devices and services too, though these can get a bit pricey. With that, I hope you learned a little something today, and I encourage you to share this video with any friends and family who might find it helpful as well. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, 
And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you take a second to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you hated it. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already for more new videos all the time covering an array of topics, including plenty more just like this one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.